Every filmmaker has their monolithic idol that is their gateway to cinema. A lot of people usually say Steven Spielberg or George Lucas. For me, that was always Stanley Kubrick. If you're not familiar with him, some of his most popular movies are Dr. Strangelove, 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Shining, Eyes Wide Shut. I more than highly recommend digging into his filmography and watching his films. So on a personal level, you know, I've always wondered about the people that I looked up to you know, growing up, including Stanley Kubrick, like what their views were on the LGBT community, because it's always heartbreaking when you find out somebody you admire holds some kind of prejudice view or something like that. But I don't think Kubrick, that's the case with him. And I'll tell you why I don't think so, because these are some gay moments that I found in Stanley Kubrick movies. Starting with a brief scene in Spartacus. The scene was too controversial at the time that they had to remove it from the original theatrical cut. And the scene just basically involves a character asking the other about the idea of being gay using subtext. I acknowledge that Kubrick himself did not embrace Spartacus as one of his own films, so it's questionable whether or not he fully had control of including this scene in the film, but it's still a gay moment in a Kubrick movie, so I wanted to include it. But let's move on to A Clockwork Orange. I've always felt homoerotic tones in this film overall. Especially in this scene, where the main character Alex and his advisor, Mr. Deltoid, who is a very bizarre character, and at one point, while Alex is in his underwear, actually gropes him in his private parts at the end of his speech. This is a really strange scene, in the way it comes out of nowhere. Whether or not this was Mr. Deltoid making a pass at Alex is open to interpretation. Later, there's a scene of Alex being checked into prison, and the guard loudly asks him at one point if he is now or has ever been a homosexual. It's done in such a comedic way that you don't really consider the deeper discrimination of the question. And of course, there's the common gay innuendos in the prison itself. Now, let's look at Barry Lyndon. Now, this film, I feel like, has a lot more gay in it. There's even a whole story with the lead character, Barry, and Captain Grogan and it even culminates in a kiss at one point. Whether or not kissing a man on the lips was normal back then, you can't deny how Kubrick shows the captain with no clear motivation. Maybe he was gay. Now, the most obviously and undisputable gay scene in this movie is when Barry is spying on two soldiers, taking a bath in the river and holding hands. One of them is talking about their next mission. And I don't really feel this scene is played for laughs. I mean, I totally can see why somebody would think that, Ultimately, Barry is the evil one who takes advantage of these two men. Now, let's jump ahead all the way to Kubrick's final film, 1999's Eyes Wide Shut, which has a few gay moments. In this scene, when Tom Cruise's character, Bill Harford, is roaming the city streets at night, a group of college jocks call him the F-slur and mock him. There's also this reoccurring motif of where the rainbow ends, And another gay moment happens in the masked ballroom scene. You can clearly see two men dancing in the foreground. But you can also see in the back what looks like two women. And it happens again. Another couple of women. And the biggest gay moment in this movie is one starring actor Alan Cumming, who plays a very effeminate gay character and looks like he's trying to make a pass at Tom Cruise's character. This scene is said to have been filmed many times, so there's definitely something that Kubrick was trying to achieve in it. And according to this Out.com article, it looks like Kubrick's assistant, Leon Vitale, was actually tasked to research gay movies of the 80s and 90s just to find the right actor for the role of the hotel clerk. So there's definitely a reason why Kubrick wanted to find an actor who was comfortable playing a queer character. And now on a more sinister note, let's look at The Shining. While there aren't a whole lot of gay moments in this film, there is one very big one. This one. The bear scene. And also, this movie has been interpreted so many different times. But more recently, some of the things that have come to light have been the discovery that Jack Nicholson in this scene was reading a Playgirl magazine. Now, this magazine at the time featured semi-nude men, and it was mostly read by women and gay men. So why would Jack be reading this? Why was it sitting in the lobby? What was Kubrick trying to say about Jack Torrance's sexuality? And on a side note, on the topic of The Shining, it's notable that Kubrick worked with Wendy Carlos. She's a composer who scored notable music on this film and happens to also be transgender. 
She went public about her transgender identity way back in 1979. That's pretty brave. So anybody who knows Kubrick knows how detail-oriented he was. You know, he thought about every scene very deeply. So it's really rare to find something that wasn't supposed to be there. The problem is, mistakes do happen, just like with any film set. And so sometimes fans do see a mistake, and they, they perceive it to be intentional, and then they run with the theory and all that. I mean, but that's what's great about Stanley Kubrick. You know, you, you allow the audience to interpret the work however they want to do, like we're doing now. And on terms of the gay front, it's really exciting because... Given the the time in which these movies came out, he had sort of progressive views on LGBT people. Like, he didn't have these antiquated views. That just makes me love him even more. And yeah, as you can see, I uh, chose to wear the Kubrick shirt today. Huh, it's just a gay bar. <laughs>